Good afternoon. This is John Armwood on the John Armwood Opinion Channel. Um, thank you for watching this video. This video today is going to be about the importance of studying history. And not just the history that is taught by the establishment in our schools, but by looking at the individual peoples within a nation and studying the history of that particular group of people. I look at history as a series of narrative stories, stories told by people to describe their journey through time and to affirm their presence in the uh, and their place in the world today. As Alex Haley wrote in his famous work from the mid 70s, Roots, the conquerors write the history. And he was right when talking about the history of a nation. The history of a nation is written always by the conquerors. But that's not the only story. That's not the only narrative. There are always groups within a nation who were conquered, who were taken over by the dominant group. And if you're an American and you study American history, American history, like that of almost every nation in the world, is a story of conquest. The American story tends to be very brutal, as is the history of many nations. America was, as we know it today, was founded based upon the conquest of an indigenous population inhabiting the North American continent. And European colonists who came over from Europe stole the continent from the indigenous population largely wiped them off the face of the land and inhabited and took over that nation. To do this, they went to another continent, the continent of Africa, kidnapped a large group of people, and by conquest, these Europeans brought them to the Western Hemisphere. This was not just something that happened in the United States. Actually, more slaves were brought to Brazil by the Portuguese than anywhere else. Many more than in the United States to work on the plantations in Brazil. British brought many slaves to the Carolinas in the United States and Virginia, as well as to the Caribbean. Many slaves were brought to the Caribbean and then to the United States. This is all part of our narrative. To isolate American history from world history is a fool's errand. Our history is one and part of a global story, but our particular narrative is one among many other narratives. It's important that we understand that race as a concept was a tool that was created to justify this huge human carnage, the slave trade, which created the European empire that America has become. This conquest was used to create America, what I call the American empire. We're taught in school that America was not a colonial nation. It's an outright lie. America colonized the continent from the Eastern seaboard, eventually all the way to the Pacific Ocean. America, by warfare, aggressive warfare, stole half of Mexico from Texas to California. To make history look clean, they claim they purchased a large part of Mexico. They acknowledged Texas was just stolen, but they claim that it was a purchase, the, the Mexican purchase. But what they failed to tell you is that when this purchase was made, it was made under the gun, gunpoint. American troops were occupying Mexico City, the capital. If you listen to the Marine song, what does it say? 
from the holds of Montezuma to the shores of Chipotle. The holds of Montezuma are in Mexico City. The U.S. Marines were in Mexico City with their rifles pointed at the capital. At the capital, the Mexican government had no choice but to surrender this territory. This was not a freely negotiated agreement. It's under. It was done under duress. That's how we describe it in in the American law, which would make it invalid. Any agreement done under duress under American law is invalid. So this land was stolen. It's like if a robber comes up and tells you, hand me your wallet, or comes to your house and says, sign over the deed to the property. And here's $50 you can have to find yourself another place to, to stay. That's what the United States did to Mexico. President Polk was the person who initiated this in 1844. Whig Congressman Abraham Lincoln talked about it in his first major national speech as a Whig Congressman in 1848. And he condemned the Polk administration for doing this. He lost his congressional seat because of that speech. There's a wonderful book out that you can read. You can get it on Amazon. It's called Mexi Abraham Lincoln and Mexico which you can read all about it. But any study of Mexican American history will confirm what I'm telling to you, telling you. So understand that if you truly want to understand what's happening now, understand the history. All through the Caribbean and South America, America has exercised hegemony. What do I mean by hegemony? domination. Go back to President Monroe in 1807. He issued the Monroe Doctrine telling the Europeans powers to stay out of the Americas, that it was America's domain. America meant it. Meant it. How many times has America invaded and changed governments by force in areas of the Caribbean, Central America, and South America? It's uncountable. America, in taking over the lands that it supposedly bought from Mexico and the actual purchase of lands that France had no real right to because there were people already living there in the Louisiana Purchase, America went and cleared the land of the indigenous people. These were countries. These were go There were governments. They had their own laws, rules, and regulations. What they didn't have was the gun. And with the power of the gun, the U.S. stole these lands. They exterminated people. There were large exterminations. During the Trail of Tears, the U.S. Army gave the Cherokee bl blankets that had smallpox on them. This is a precursor to tactics used by the Nazis in World War II or the Belgians in the Congo. The Belgians killed over 4 million people in the Congo. Some of the estimates run as high as 6 to 10 million people. This is about conquest. Largely what we know of, of history is a narrative about conquest and who conquered whom. But understand that Governments lie. Nations lie about their history. We must study and learn our history so we are able to unravel the lies and understand why things are the way they are. We're taught that slavery ended in 1865 with the Emancipation Proclamation. My grandfather, Walter Adam Armwood, fought slavery in the state of Florida during the first part of the century, during the period of the World War. One, he was director of Negro labor for the state of Florida. Slavery was still going on. The U.S. government, Attorney General's office, acknowledged that slavery was still going on a week after Japan attacked the United States in 1941. Read Circular 3591, U.S. Attorney General Circular 3591. It talks specifically about slavery 
continuing in the United States in 1941 and the need for U.S. attorneys to prosecute. There's a lot of history that is not told truthfully. It's not just the United States. This is a global problem. Japan is as notorious as any nation for this. But most countries do it in one form or the other. What makes the United States unique is the United States' claim of being superior. The United States' claim of not being a colonial power. Though after the war with Spain in 1898, the Philippines, St. Thomas, they, John, St. Croix, um, Puerto Rico, all became U.S. colonies, including Cuba. Africans in Cuba fought a war with the United States through the first decade of the 20th century, as did the Filipino, the indigenous Filipino. At the same time, were fighting a war with the U.S. Army. The war with the Philippines before Vietnam was the longest war in American history. How many of you learned about that in school? History is a selective narrative told by the conquerors. That's what institutionalized history is. We, who want to be aware of the world around us, have to look beyond what the narrative is that is taught in the government-run schools and look at other sources. The good thing is that there are records, they're available. Nowadays, we have the internet. When I was coming up, we used libraries, microfilm, to look at old documents. It's much easier now. Please continue to do your research, learn, and hopefully understand. Alrighty, this is John Armwood on the Armwood Opinion channel. Subscribe to this channel if you like the content that's here. Hit the check box if you like it. And if you don't like it, hit the check box twice. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.